why humans might never find alien life. Is humanity doomed to spending an eternity alone looking to the stars? A recent paper seems to think so, as it claims to have identified serious flaws in the way human astronomers search for extraterrestrials. So what are we doing wrong? What have the cosmic gorillas got to do with this? And if humans can't find alien life, do we know someone else who can? We are blind. Imagine for a moment that you are a sub-editor in charge of proofreading Doctor Who magazine. Your job is to go through an article searching for grammatical mistakes and misspelled words. That well, sounds easy, right? All you have to do is be meticulous, read the text a few times, and you should catch everything you need to make sure the article is polished and professional. Unless there's something in there that you never thought of. This actually happened, by the way. As in 2017, a writer for Doctor Who magazine used the first letter of each paragraph to spell out an offensive message directed towards the BBC. But an editor would never even think to look for such a thing. And that's what makes pranks like this so hard to detect. How can you find something if you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for? This is one of the many problems humans have when it comes to searching for alien life. When we're told to search for one thing, we become blind to everything else. And even the most absurdly obvious objects can elude our awareness. This is known by the objectively excellent name the Cosmic Gorilla Effect. And it's a phenomenon which was recently investigated by researchers at Spain's University of Cadiz. The experiment required a group of people to look at aerial photographs and identify signs of human structures as opposed to natural formations. Pretty simple, right? All you have to do is look for walls, roofs, maybe a nice little picket fence, and voila! You found evidence of an extraterrestrial apple pie family. The problem is, while the participants were busy looking for evidence of structures, most of them completely missed the fact that a small, waving gorilla was present in one of the images. If you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for, the search for anything can become impossible. This selective form of perception is known as inattentional blindness, and it was most famously demonstrated in a 1999 video by Harvard's Daniel Simons and Christopher Chabri, where a man dressed as a gorilla passes by the camera while some kids are playing basketball. If before they see the video, a viewer is asked to count the number of passes, well, research indicates there'll be a 50% chance they'll miss the entrance of the gorilla. This test explores the limits of human intuition and attention, and in the context of our search for alien life, the results are not good at all. What are aliens? Gabriel de la Torre was the leader of the cosmic gorilla experiment at Cadiz, and he believes that the inherent biases within human beings may prevent us from being able to detect the presence of extraterrestrials. After his finding in the journal Acta Astronautica, de la Torre was quoted as saying, When we think of other intelligent beings, we tend to see them from our perceptive and conscience sieve. However, we are limited by our sui generis vision of the world, and it's hard for us to admit it. Hollywood and the media in general have warped the public's perception of what an alien being or alien structure might look like, as have our various cultures, societies, and scientific discoveries. But even without these biases, our minds might still be rendered incapable of recognizing a novel form of life because of the limits of human imagination. For all we know, some beings may exist as light, others may consist of nothing more than a sentient purple gas. And while we seem pretty confident strutting around our three-dimensional reality like we own the place, can we be sure that four-dimensional beings beyond our comprehension do not exist within the same space? What we see as the fundamental signs of life and civilization may be just the tip of the iceberg. For example, what if an alien race is made of dark matter? Dark matter doesn't interact with the electromagnetic spectrum, and this means it is not directly observable. A dark matter being could be sat upon your lap twirling your hair this very minute, and you just gotta sit there and take it. More realistic, though, is the prospect of an alien race using dark matter to communicate. But once more, we'd have no idea if this were happening right now. The aliens don't have to be that exotic, either. The largest form of life on planet Earth is Armillaria astoyae, 10 square kilometers of fungus which spreads across the Blue Mountains of East Oregon. Would we recognize a comparably simple yet widespread life form 
if we found it on an exoplanet? What if what we think of as nature is a form of intelligence? Could we detect that? We don't even know what fully constitutes life on our own planet, and at the distances we're talking about with regards to the universe, it may be virtually impossible to identify the signs of life on other worlds if it's too biologically different from life on Earth. The signs of an oxygen-rich world would be a dead giveaway if you knew that some beings subsist on this element. But what about a planet with an atmosphere of mostly methane or argon? Might those also represent the signs of alien life? Once more, until we find evidence of such beings, we have no idea whether or not they exist. And in something of a catch-22 situation, that means we have virtually no chance of detecting them either. The Hurdles our inability to perceive novel forms of aliens or alien signals is one major hurdle towards discovering extraterrestrial life forms. But given the size of the universe, it seems probable that if aliens do exist, at least some of them will be recognizable, and a few may even use recognizable signals in an attempt to communicate. So let's say that's true, and there is a civilization out there which looks kinda gross but is demonstrably alive. Maybe there's some kind of half-slug, half-sandwich creature with baloney for lips. I don't know, I've never met these guys. But if they do exist, how could we detect them from light years away? Radio signals are one possibility, but since they and all forms of electromagnetic radiation move at the speed of light, we are somewhat constrained as to how far we can reach. The same restrictions apply to detecting life through telescopic observations of an exoplanet. James Lovelock outlined how this would be possible in his 1967 paper, Life Detection by Atmospheric Analysis. But, once more, we are limited by the speed of light as to how far we can reach. Let's say our world is 1,000 light years from a planet which we think may have the ability to harbor life. Sending radio waves towards them or viewing this world at its present state would be a thousand-year project, since that's how long its light would take to reach us. In that time, either civilization, most likely us, could have died off before sending or receiving a single message. And this passing of ships in the night is likely to play out right across the universe. At the risk of confusing metaphors, imagine that each civilization of the universe exists inside a bubble which represents the limit of their influence. When they start sending out signals, this bubble expands at light speed, the speed of their communications. However, since all these civilizations are so far apart, many of these bubbles may never, ever come to touch. Communications may be happening all across the universe, but due to the distance involved, they might never reach any intelligent destination, let alone their intended one. And we're not just talking distance in terms of physical space, either. Civilizations may have come and gone long before ours existed, and they'll likely do so after we've smoked ourselves, too. For two worlds of intelligent beings to communicate, this requires that they both inhabit roughly the same time and period of technological development as the other, while also being close enough to say, how do you do? If a technologically advanced race meets one significantly less developed than itself, they'll face the problems we've outlined in the first part of this video. The dum-dums, that is, the humans, won't be able to recognize that which stands before them. So, what can we do about this? Is there a way we could somehow bend reality or cheat the system? The Great Filter suggests that most civilizations, possibly including our own, may die off before they reach the technological level required to communicate with others at faster than light speed. And in any event, those which do survive are likely so rare that the distances in time and space between them requires exponentially faster forms of communication just to keep up. But it's not all doom and gloom. One technique which we could potentially employ to speed up interstellar communications is gravitational lensing. Objects of sufficient mass have been seen to affect the speed of light in their near vicinity through the extreme strength of their gravitational pull. Now, gravitational lensing effectively bends light towards the observer like a magnifying glass. And Claudio McConey's 2010 paper explores how this method of viewing faraway planets could be used to push our communications beyond their normal reach using our own sun. But Seti's Seth Shostak, say that five times fast, has a different idea. He's been quoted as saying that while aliens are unlikely to make a visit to us due to the extreme distances involved, 
we may instead encounter some sort of artificially intelligent machinery sent by extraterrestrials way back in the past. So, if aliens could do this, might AI be a viable option for humanity too? Could artificially intelligent machines overcome our human biases and the vastness of space to become a vital tool in the hunt for extraterrestrial intelligence? You'll have to head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries to find out. That's where our video, When AI Meets Aliens, can be accessed for just two bucks. But that's not all, because a single $2 monthly pledge also gains access to hundreds of Strange Mystery bonus videos that you can't see anywhere else. So, if you'd like to find out what happens when AI meets aliens and support our channel's continued existence, please visit patreon.com slash strange mysteries now.